Hello there, Liz Truss likes to portray herself as the new Margaret Thatcher and could become British Prime Minister. She's much more like any other politician, I have to say. Liz Truss still had a surprise in store. As Prime Minister, she would abolish the intelligent motorways, which in Great Britain allow you to use hard shoulders at peak times, she declared at the last major campaign event in London on Thursday. Her competitor Rishi Sunak had previously called for an end to the concept due to safety concerns. In the past, there had been increasing reports of serious accident on so-called intelligence roads. Truss also addresses safety concerns and then strikes new notes. The speed limit of 110 km per hour could also be up for discussion. We have to be ready to look into that, she let viewers in London know but then adds that she can't give a more precise answer at the moment. She has held many different top positions in the British government over the past 10 years, but a post in the Department for Transport has not been one of them. In the past, Truss had called for the speed limit to be increased to 130 km per hour. But why should she suddenly put a new, whole new topic on the agenda so close to the end of a month-long election campaign. The event in the British capital does not provide any answers. Other topics are currently more in focus. But if you look at the appearances of today's foreign minister in the past, you will find similar moments that leave you questioning. Sometimes it remains unclear whether Truss always thinks enough before she speaks. Sometimes you get the impression that she's just trying to give her listeners exactly what they want to hear. Well, she voted against Brexit, by the way. Both apply to another incident in Norwich a week ago. Whether French President Emmanuel Macron is a friend or foe, she cannot say at the moment, said the minister there at an election campaign event. If we are not able to say between the French and the British whether we are friend or foe, the term is not neutral then we are heading for serious problems. That's how Macron warned a day later. And the Conservatives, who are enthusiastic about Brexit, gave Truss a lot of applause for her statements. It is quite possible that Truss and Macron will have more dealings with each other in the future. If the Conservative Party in Great Britain announces who will succeed Boris Johnson as party leader today, According to polls, Truss could take, take over the Tory chairman, no, not the chairmanship, the leadership, and thus also the third prime minister, in, uh, women prime minister in British history. Publicly, she tries to stage herself as a strong advocate of a lean state with low taxes like a new Margaret Thatcher. On the other hand, she seems to be similar to her predecessor Johnson in her tendency towards populism. What would you expect from her as head of government then? The fact that Mary Elizabeth Truss would eventually make a career as an arch-conservative politician was not necessarily predetermined. Truss grew up in a household to the left of Labour, that's how she revealed it to the British Times. Her mother was involved in the anti-nuclear movement. The family first moved from their birthplace of Oxford to the Scottish town of Paisley and later went to school in Leeds. However. Truss did not make her first political steps with Labour or the Tories, but with the Liberals. At the age of 19, in a passionate speech to her party colleagues, she demanded that Great Britain should abolish the monarchy. Today, Truss says she regretted the speech almost immediately. She told the BBC that she had little contact with conservative politics at the time. Over time, she understood that Great Britain was also successful because of the constitutional monarchy. People who knew Truss from her student days, on the other hand, attested to her ability to adapt politically even then. She had a small number of commitments that she will not back down from, said Mark Steers, who had looked after her at the university. Apart from that, Truss is looking for what promises her the most political boost. You could call it opportunism or pragmatism, depending on whether you are a friend or a foe. Two years after her anti-monarchy speech, Truss joined the Tories. Her political career picked up speed from 2010. Truss became a member of the British House of Commons. 
Two years later, a journey began that took her to various ministries. She started in the Ministry of Education, later became Minister for the Environment and Justice, and then she was responsible for trade. In 2019, she took on the job of Minister for Women and Equality, and last year she also took over the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Even as a top politician, she made bizarre appearances. In 2014, at the Tories' party conference, she campaigned for more domestic products to be consumed in Great Britain. The fact that two-thirds of all cheese in the country is imported is what Truss gravely calls a disgrace. Truss may be politically clever and adept, but intellectually, she's not. That's what British political scientist Anthony Glees told T Online. As far as populism is concerned, however, the Foreign Secretary could certainly keep up with the outgoing Prime Minister Johnson. Gleese speaks of a Johnson in a dress. However, Truss lacks the charisma to use her embarrassing performances for herself like the current Prime Minister did. Brexit also showed how flexible Truss is. I don't want my daughters to grow up in a world where they need a visa to work in Europe she said in 2016 before the referendum. After the vote to leave the EU, she announced that she had changed her mind. In gratitude, Johnson made her Secretary of Commerce or Trade in 2019. It may have been the decisive turning point in Truss's career then. You have to be a hard Brexiteer to lead the Tories, Glee said. Unlike her competitor Rishi Sunak, Truss may have voted against leaving the EU. In the fight for Downing Street, on the other hand, she ranted loudly against Brussels and announced that she would continue to unilaterally disregard the Northern Ireland Protocol, which was controversial on the island. Sunak, on the other hand, avoided harsh statements against the EU and cannot count on the support of the hardliners. During the election campaign, Truss made the promise of imminent tax cuts as her second bestseller in her party. In order to combat inflation and high energy costs, it's important to stimulate the economy, she says. Some attest that the foreign minister is following in the footsteps of Margaret Thatcher with a lean state and an unbridled economy. The comparisons were reinforced by the fact that she also optically approached the Iron Lady. There are pictures showing her in a tank just like Thatcher. In the election campaign, she wore a large white bow in a TV duel, and Thatcher has worn comparable outfits in the past. Truss publicly rejects the comparisons with the first British female prime minister, but they should still be of use to her at the party base. Apart from the looks, Anthony Gleese doesn't see any similarities. It's completely insane to say that Liz Truss is a new Margaret Thatcher because, unlike Truss, Thatcher was a big supporter of the European single market. Yeah, it saved the segment of Europe. For now, though, Truss has enough support from her party base to move to 10 Downing Street. It is conceivable, however, that the joy will only last for a short time. Officially, the next British general election is scheduled for 2024 at the earliest. Under pressure, however, Truss could face us much faster. In the Tory faction, her competitor Sunak recently had the most advocates. At the moment, the Labour Party are clearly in the lead among the population as a whole. Boris Johnson's last election victory in 2019 was also due to the fact that he was able to win many voters over to his side in traditionally pro-Labour regions in the north, the so-called Red Wall. Truss, on the other hand, is the completely wrong politician for this group of voters from Glee's point of view. Truss statements, which were only recently leaked to the press, could also annoy people in the more impoverished North. Truss is said to have said during her time at the Treasury that there was a fundamental problem with British work ethic, especially outside of London. And then there is Boris Johnson. The outgoing Prime Minister is publicly regarded as a supporter of Truss, although he recently promised to support each of his successors fully and unreservedly. Former Johnson advisor Dominic Cummings, who has been waging a mud fight against Johnson since leaving Downing Street, senses a plan behind it. 
Johnson hopes that Truss will fail as Prime Minister so that he can return at some point in the future. Cummings named Truss the human hand grenade because she only causes chaos. Several British media recently also reported that Johnson could speculate on it. He had repeatedly expressed his admiration for Winston Churchill. The luminary of British politics returned to Downing Street in 1951 after a six-year hiatus. And I'll see you in my next video. I'll be back.